departed by Roy Dale. In a space that lurks between the fire of truth and the desperation of lone intent, thoughts touch on the tattered tapestry of memory. It is not so much the coming and going of what once was, but the loss of things that once were. It was a time when all was possible and magic moments danced in the air. So it was that we, a word that sits insignificantly on forgotten pages, but means so much, where Rat and a younger self shared a flat. More to the truth, a roach-infested room at the Gresham Hotel on Granville. Now and then, one of the tormented souls living in the darkness, hidden in isolation, escaped by dying. On the street, the city's hum rumbled on louder, oblivious to any suffering, life, or death. Bill, alias Rat, was a thin, tall, long-haired, prominent-nosed hippie with horned-rimmed glasses. Myself, broad-shouldered, short, slim, with black, wavy hair that went on for days. He and I existed between worlds for a season or two. Cash was easy come, easy go. Pawn shops were our friends, and one might have called us light-fingered. For a spell, we rarely saw the noonday sun. Nighttime was showtime. The place came alive, high heels staccatoed on wooden floors, work boots and polished shoes shuffled drunkenly behind. Ladies of all genders were at work, threats, disputes, fights, screams rung out. Alcohol and drug fueled passion, paranoia, and depraved cravings as sickly yellow smoke swirled lazily along hallways. Outside, police, paramedics, and blood littered the sidewalks. Belongings were wrapped in plastic and crammed into a barren closet. A pair of bruised bongos, bongo drums, and a battered, battered guitar reverberated against the wall. Where they had come from, I can't rightly remember. Evening started with a joint or whatever else that was kicking round. As one thing led to another, we tried our hand at original compositions and other stuff. Between midnight and sunrise, or when the rain poured down hard, the room became a refuge. When there was nothing to do, no money, no drink, no smoke, we played. And when there was an abundance of intoxicants, more so. Rat on the bongos, my younger self picked and strummed the guitar. Words hung in the air while our rhythms brought them to life. Being on the top floor with little ventilation, the door was often left slightly ajar. Tobacco and pot fumes seeped out and languished in the hall before slowly seeping into the walls. One night, our early morning, a woman slipped in to listen. Clutching her ears, she whispered, not too terrible and then drifted away with the haze. It kind of started from there. As time went by, more people found their way to our rented squalor. Different forms of mind-altering drugs influenced the space. It all seemed so harmless, so civilized, so how it ought to be. It was a hippie fantasy. I do not believe our playing improved, but rather the condition of our audience declined. Be that as it may, through word of mouth and the times we lived in, Rat and I found ourselves playing in the bistros and coffee shops along 4th Avenue and thereabouts. Seasons change. The bongo skins became thin. The strings frayed and fell silent. Bill got a job or went to university, who can say? Maybe both. You can cut your hair, change your name, but you are who you are. My young self crossed the ocean to work in a Victoria shoe store called the British Boot Shop, an irony of sorts. Regardless, 
it heralded the end of a moment and the beginning of another. Eons went by before our paths crossed again. When we were alone, he was rat, but in the proper world of wives and such, he was Bill. A while ago, the phone rang and the caller said he had died. His passing saddened me. Sometimes when settled in with my old guitar and can get to that place where the words and music speak, the sound of bongos tap, tap, tapping rhythmically floats in the air. It is then for an instant my friend and I play on that splintered bridge of yesterday's tomorrow.